How is it possible that you can have no new spots on your MRI? You cannot have had an attack since I last saw you in clinic, and yet you're getting worse. How is that possible? Don't turn away because I'm going to answer that question starting right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we care for families impacted by MS from around the globe. In today's video, I want to address a common frustration of families impacted by MS. And please make sure to watch the entire video. The second half, I'm gonna share some pro tips that I don't want you to miss. How is it possible that they haven't had an attack? How is it possible that the recent MRI shows no new spots and yet they're still failing the litmus test of life. They're still having difficulties and they feel as if they're getting worse. How is that possible? Let's jump in. Let's start the discussion by throwing out some definitions. When I say the word worsening, what I mean is that your neurological examination is not as good as it used to be. So when I do all the tests and stuff, I can see that you don't perform as well as you did the last time I examined you. Your exam has gotten worse. Okay, now there's two ways that we can experience worsening in MS. One way is that you get worse following an attack. And so let's use an example of a left eye optic neuritis, okay? So you lose vision on your left eye, God forbid, and you can't see. So now if I examine you, your exam is clearly worse, no question about it. Let's take in this scenario that you do not fully recover, okay? So your vision returns after the optic neuritis, but not 2020, not all the way. Maybe at the end of the optic neuritis, you only recover partially. And so now you have 20 over 200 vision in this eye. You have sustained worsening because of incomplete recovery from an attack. In essence, you now have accrued some neurological disability because you didn't fully recover from this eye. Okay, that's one of two ways that you can get worse in MS. The second way you can get worse in MS is independent from an attack. You can have worsening on your neurological examination, but there's been no attack. We actually have coined a term called PURA, progression independent from relapse activity, right? And I just introduced this term progression. Progression of neurological disability can occur in this setting of, I didn't have an attack, I'm just having more difficulties. And here's the kicker. It doesn't only occur in someone who's had MS for 30 years and has clear secondary progressive MS or in someone who has primary progressive MS. If you're attentive and you watch in relapsing remitting MS, the most common form, people can have PIRA. They can have progression independent from relapse activity. So go back to this scenario that I started the video with. I see you in clinic and I take a history and there's been no attack since I last saw you, and we look at a new MRI and there's no new spots, and yet you're having more difficulty doing things. How is that possible? First of all, it is possible, and it frustrates me when a patient has been told by a doctor that that's not conceivable or possible, because look, you're a U expert. You know your body and you know you're, that you're having more difficulties. That's real. To explain this, I want to use a couple analogies, and I'm going to use an analogy of a shotgun. Now, I don't own a firearm, but just pretend with me that I own a shotgun, right? So here's my fake shotgun, right? And I shoot a hole in that wall in front of me, right? So now there's a giant shotgun hole in the wall, and just for fun, I leave it. I don't fill it. I don't repair it. And every time we walk by it, we giggle and say, remember when I, I blew a hole in that wall? All right. Now, take this building that I'm in and fast forward 20 years. All the building materials are aging, they're getting older, they're starting to wear out. Which wall of these four walls in the room I'm in falls first, right? It's a rhetorical question. The wall with the holes in it falls first, right? Because it's been structurally damaged. When you have new spots on your MRI, that's brain damage. When you have an attack that causes a loss of function, that's caused by brain damage and it doesn't fully recover, and so you're left with some structural damage. Your brain is amazing, and it tries to rewire itself, okay? So it, it sets up new connections so that you regain function, but it's working around areas of damage. And as you age as a human being, as you have birthday after birthday, and as your brain and the rest of your body ages, those old areas can wear out. So I kind of sometimes think of this as sort of the devil's price, if you will, because you pay at the time of the injury. You pay at the time of the attack. 
but then you pay 15 years later when that area wears out. And so you can see worsening on exam. You can see someone who's struggling with a litmus test of life, not because of a new attack or a new lesion, but because areas of old neurological injury, of old structural brain damage are now wearing out. So what do we do with this information? Well, for starters, knowledge is power. And I think it's super important that families impacted by MS understand properly MS pathology. And they understand that you can have incomplete recovery from an attack resulting in worsening on exam, or and you can have PURA, progression independent from relapse activity. And that's another way that you can develop an accrued neurological disability. So having that understanding for starters, I think is worth it's it's worth something in and of itself. Second, it helps us understand why we have to act ahead of time, why we have to take steps ahead of time to prevent an attack from occurring, to prevent new spots on the brain MRI. I want you to live your best life despite having MS. And I want you to take steps early on to prevent the damage from occurring in the first place so that as your brain ages, as you age, and as the structures of your brain wear out, that we're not going to experience damage and pay the devil's price where old lesions wear out later and then you pay a second time. Now, sometimes nature's too generous. And in fact, there's yet another way that a person impacted by MS can experience worsening. Now, this part is super important because these things are treatable, right? We can treat them. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about under-treated chronic symptoms. The most important example is depression. People impacted by MS are twice as likely to experience clinical depression compared to the general population. And depression clouds everything gray and ugly. And it gives us the, the outlook that everything is worse. And very, very importantly, this has been studied, people with MS with undertreated depression actually do progress faster in neurological disability compared to those with treated depression or without depression. Treating depression is a super important thing for those reasons. And if we identify that you are sad, blue, and depressed, and we can take efforts to correct that and improve that, whether that be by medications or talk therapy or by exercise or by myriad other maneuvers, the result will be that you will have a better outlook. You will fare better. Your day-to-day will be better. And in reality, we slow worsening. I'll give you a second example, spasticity. Very common with people impacted by MS. Someone with spasticity may have significant pain all day long. They may have cramps that drop them. They may have spasms, which are really uncomfortable and kind of sometimes embarrassing or frustrating. They can have difficulty bending their limbs. And this chronic symptom over time can erode at the quality of your life. If we treat it, whether that be by stretching and strengthening with physical therapy or with pills or with Botox or with a baclofen pump or whatever, if we treat it, we can make you move more easily. Your walking improves. So that worsening actually gets better because now you walk more freely, but it also improves the quality of your life for other reasons, not having cramps and spasms, not having a limb that's really frustrating to bend. And so this is another example where by treating a chronic symptom, we can improve things and we can improve a sense of worsening. Third example, cog fog. Cognitive fatigue or cognitive impairment is very common in MS. Now, this is not an Alzheimer's dementia. This is a difficulty with multitasking. This is difficulty processing, particularly as the day goes on and you start to get cognitively tired. This is a problem with remembering lists and doing things under time pressure, etc. Someone who is experiencing cognitive fatigue at home or at work can feel like everything is worse because that is such a pervasive symptom. But if we treat it, and I have plenty of videos on this channel about how we can treat cog fog, we can improve that aspect of things and everything improves in a, in a sense. The worsening is improved. This section that I just talked about, in my opinion, is super important because if you have chronic undertreated or untreated symptoms and we address them, something very important happens for you. And I want that for you. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boy. My name is Aaron Boster, and it's my hope that through these lectures, I can up your game. I can help energize you and empower you and hopefully educate you to better understand how to combat this nasty disease. I make these videos every Monday morning, and I hope that you find them to be helpful. Definitely leave me a comment or a suggestion for a future video down in the section below. 
Now you may notice all of these awesome names on the screen with places from all around the world. What you're seeing right now is excerpts from my recent live stream where I had an Ask Me Anything on this. And it was so awesome to see this global growing online village in mass. And so I just wanted to give a shout out to all the folks around the world that jumped online with me. It was an awesome evening and I look forward to doing it again. It sound right, boy.